Welcome to this short PowerPoint video on active listening skills. My name is Gary Tomlinson and I'll be your narrator for this session. Listening is defined as the process of receiving a message from a speaker, processing that message to make sense out of it, and then responding in ways that show understanding of what the speaker means. What listening is not is waiting patiently for your turn to talk. When you listen well and have been perceived to have listened well, you help forge the beginning of a very productive relationship. Why? Because when you really hear someone else, you're given the very precious gift of being understood, a gift that most of us don't get enough of. This provides strong cement for relationships. And besides, by listening, you just might learn something. Now here are four active listening skills to make your own. The first is attending. Ask open-ended questions. These are questions designed to get the other person to talk, to give their opinion. Remember to be quiet and to listen. Seek to understand before seeking to be understood. The second is acknowledgement. While listening, use signals to convey to your listener that you're paying attention to them. Give positive verbal cues, such as, hmm, interesting, tell me more. Just as actors benefit from prompts, your conversational partner will welcome your assistance in keeping the exchange going. Nonverbally, you show you're a skilled listener by maintaining steady eye contact. Using gestures such as nodding of the head, good facial expressions, even taking notes. The third skill is paraphrase. Repeat back to the listener what you've heard. This is when real communication begins. By repeating the information you've heard, your listener can let you know if you've understood them. Try doing this on a regular basis for the next week or so. You'll be surprised at the number of times the other person will tell you that's not exactly what they meant, even if you said it back to them using their same exact words. After hearing you repeat what they said, they may come back and try to better clarify what they meant to say. Without this technique of paraphrasing, there's always a chance that what they meant is not what you heard. And at the very least, effective communication should be mutual understanding. And the fourth skill is probing. Now you're able to ask more questions to get more detailed information from the other person. Here's a good technique to use when probing. Use their name, especially if it's a new acquaintance. For example, Judy, I like that suggestion. How did you come up with it? Or your vacation sounds exciting, Fred. Tell me more. When you use the other person's name, you show that you've paid attention. You'll make conversations much more personal by doing nothing else but including their name. Here are two more techniques to consider making your own when honing your listening skills. They are mirroring and matching. The mirroring and matching technique is one of the most effective ways to build rapport with strangers, new contacts, or potential clients. As we all know, building rapport is one of the most critical aspects to enhance both relationships and sales. However, most of us think that bonding is rapport and that you must bond with others before you can move forward. Here's the difference between bonding and rapport. Bonding is where you do the talking initially to find something in common with the other person in order to make them feel comfortable about you. You talk, the other person listens. However, rapport is where you ask the other person a question about something positive about them or their company, their product or service, or their family. They do the talking while you listen so that you can match, mirror, and paste them. In sales, the early steps of building rapport with your customers and clients are usually the most important aspect of the sales process. Your goal is to create a feeling of similarity between you and your prospect. If we try to create rapport with only the content of our conversation, we are missing out on one of the biggest ways we can communicate similarity to another person. Mirroring is the act of adopting another person's behavior as if you were that person's mirror image. If done subtly, you'll be able to create a strong sense of rapport between yourself and the other person. For example, when meeting a potential client in person, pay attention to their body movements. When the client crosses their legs, you also cross your legs. When they lean closer, you do the same. If they're talking quickly, you listen quickly. If they're laid back, you be laid back as well. However, be careful how you do it. Be subtle. You don't want it to come across as mocking or mimicking the other person. We all prefer to do business with people we feel are more like us. 
We communicate best with friends, significant others, and business associates who see the world the way we do. By paying closer attention to the way others communicate, you'll be able to show that you understand their situation and unique needs. You can demonstrate that awareness by mirroring and selectively matching their phrase construction, volume, vocabulary, rhythm, body language, and mood. You'll make a great initial impression when you demonstrate good listening skills. The best way to make a good first impression is to focus on the needs of the other person. Make each person feel involved in an intimate conversation simply by asking a question and then listening intently, showing through your body language and facial expressions that you're sincere. When you do that, you'll be remembered. I hope you enjoyed this educational session. Good speaking and listening skills are required in today's business world. And the good news is they're both acquirable. You can learn to become an assertive speaker and an active listener. You just have to be willing to pay the price. And for those who do, the reward is enormous. Here's something you can do right away to make yourself a better communicator. Just start thinking about communication in terms of an outcome. If you do that, you'll automatically start communicating more effectively. If you like this educational format, be sure to check out my other videos at www.gary-tomlinson.com. I'll be adding new ones on a regular basis, so make sure you come back often and feel free to share this education with others. The education in this session comes from two main sources. One is the course workbook from Ty Boyd's The Excellent Speaking Institute. And the other is from the book Communicating Effectively for Dummies by Marty Bronstein. I'll leave you now with this quote by Dale Carnegie. You can make more friends in two months by becoming interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get other people interested in you. <laughs>